And do you want to tell me a little bit about your band? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, um, uh, I have a wonderful group of guys that I that fate brought us together one day. Um, I was uh, I went to see a, a Rock of Ages show. I was a guest here in, for a show on Broadway. And after the after the show, there was a after party at the China Club, and there was a, a terrific a band together and getting ready to do some shows and recording, et cetera, et cetera. And the following day, I got a phone call from them saying that they would be willing to uh, offer their services. And so that was the beginning of the Steve Orgy Dream Band. So well, it's, it's a wonderful band. Their, their ex Valentine was named the band. They were a popular band in the 80s. Mm -hmm. They're from Long Island, New York. And uh, uh, Adam Holland on guitar, Gerard Zappa on the bass, Mike Morales on drums. And on keyboards is Craig Coleman. So that, and when we're when we're fortunate enough to have them available, we have a couple of terrific ladies singers singing with us by the name of Erica Iozo and Sally Blandon. And what's great about them is they give us a different visual than Journey, as well as a different sound, having their voices as opposed to a bunch of guys singing to you. That had a couple of gals singing. You know, it was always what I wanted to do, and so, like mm -hmm. I said, when you had the opportunity to, to make the decision, and then, you know, when you're in the driver's seat, that's what I did. So I got a couple of great girls singing with us. So sometimes, more times than not, they're with us, and they're always it's always a great show when they are. Oh, I'll have to catch it one day. Do they do little dance moves? You know what? As, as much as they can, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Isn't that part of it? That's half of it, isn't it? It's yeah. Beautiful, beautiful young lady. Yeah, I know because I know things get crazy. Bands, bands are a lot like marriages. But they're exactly like marriages. <laughs> a little noisier. Yeah. They're they... entirely like marriages. Yeah, I know. When they break up, they're like divorces. It's, it's so true. And if you don't think if someone ever, I mean, that is just the truth. It is. It's you have, to, you have to nurture it. You need to pull the weeds. You have to maintain it, just like a marriage. And you know, you fall in and out of love, and that just happened. That's only human nature. It's wrong sometimes. You know what? It's just like a marriage. When people, when great bands split up, it's not right or wrong. It's no one's a, has to be the villain. Nobody has to be the the bad guy and the good guy. It just happens. Right. And uh, it's because music is so passionate, just like love and marriage is so passionate. Sure. You know, and one, you know, you can have a two, take the Beatles, for example, you can have these four great minds, and after 10 years or five years, they just start growing apart and start creating different, going in different directions, and, you know, we just can't stay together. It, it, it would stifle their creativity, so. Yeah, and then, of course, a, a, Yoko, a Yoko could always come into the picture. <laughs> You know, I think Paul Yoko gets a bad rap. I think so, too. I, I, th I don't think it had as much to do with her as it just had to do with them growing and changing. She was the fall gal. She absolutely took all the heat, and it was just human nature, that's all. They met her in, an, uh, in one, of the, one of the greatest uh, record time record studios, one of the finer uh, studios in New York that also is no longer in existence like all the great studios. And I met her in an elevator going down and, and, and rode the elevator. I was actually very, very uh, excited to, to ride an elevator with her. And she was very sweet and very kind. Aww. And I felt then the way I feel now. Okay, so you, you your band is, um, you in four pieces, right? You said, and then the two girls, uh, the two girls come out with the bigger shows. Is that the situation? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, they're from Chicago. They're from the greater Chicago, Chicago land area. Oh wow! Definitely, when we're in the Midwest, they're they're all there. Yeah, oh, that's pretty interesting. And then and then of course, so you're, you know, you're from New York, and then your your backup band is from New York, and uh, mm -hmm. wow, that's interesting. So everybody's got now, you know, everybody's got the New York accents, huh? Absolutely. In fact, it's it's there's a lot of New York talk. <laughs> do, do people tease you when you go to other places and, and you have conversations? Do you get do you get teased about your accent? No, oh. and rightfully so. Do that. Because I, I mean, I am living in you know Tennessee, so I get teased constantly. Oh, wh 
I love your accent. My, I don't have an accent. <laughs> oh, of course. You know, I love down there. I like to go to uh, in Nashville. That uh, what's it called? Uh, Knoxville, the bagel place. Oh, do you? I do only because of the name. I mean, that that attracted me. So this this is something that I could relate to. That's cute. That's cute. Do you come? Do you mm -hmm. come to Tennessee off? Do you ever get a chance to get here? Right. Right now, we're consider well. We're we're talking about relocating within the next couple of years. And Nashville's on the top of the list. Like you need another Italian from New York, right? Absolutely. I think yes, we do. Yeah. We absolutely do. Um, and you know what? Well, well, Nashville proper, I, I just won't ever live in the city. I'm actually an hour and a half outside of the city. and um, That's probably better. It is better. Well, because you're close enough to go do what you got to do, but you, you, know, you get to live your life very quietly. Um, and yeah. that, that's really nice. And it just, it's so scenic here. It's so beautiful. It's so peaceful. And um, I don't know. I just love it. We had the opportunity. People kept saying, you got to move closer to the city. So we spent six months looking and we just didn't find anything with that, you know, was more cost effective or nicer than what we have. And we said, we're, we're already home. We're already here. Oh, of course, of course. You know, I, I, I'm trying to remember the first time I played Nashville was definitely the Lyman. <gasps> so, um, that had to be something. That had to be an experience. Oh, my God. It, you know, I, I, my first, aside from whatever I, I knew from the Beatles, my first three chords were Hank Williams from a oh. Hank Williams songbook. So just to think of when I stepped out on that stage and to think of all the great, country artists that came from that era that were on that stage it was just it was uh that's that's a goose that's a goosebump moment to be honest with you what I, one of the things i miss most about being with journey and, and being on those great tours was that on my days off i would leave all the glitz and well there's no glitz and glamour and rock and roll frankly it's it's a lot more hard work and sweat and toil. But mm -hmm. I would leave the rock and roll lifestyle. I'd get on a bike and I'd tour around the little towns and find the, you know, the cornfields and, and the little quaint towns. And that's really, when you've seen the real America and, and finding those towns that you're talking about in the main street, mm -hmm. it sounds corny and cliche, but those are the, you know, growing up in Brooklyn and New York City to find that contrast was something I always look for, and I really, really miss that. So whenever you get the chance, you you know, the city boy really appreciates that small town feel that we didn't have growing up. Mm -hmm. We grew up one on top of the other, and sitting on the stoop, and you know, somebody's cooking fish one night, everybody, the whole neighborhood. I know. <laughs> if, if, if a husband and wife are having a fight, the whole block knows it. Absolutely. I know. I mean, I spent the first four years on Bleecker Street in Queens. You know what I love about growing up in Brooklyn, uh, in the Italian section, was when you walk down the street on a Sunday, everybody down, coming through from their driveway, on their window was, everybody was making tomato sauce. You yeah. just called it sauce. Right. But you smelled everybody's sauce. And to be honest with you, that was... That was growing up in the city to me, in, 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 in New York City. Mm-hmm. Now the neighborhood has changed. It's, a, uh, it's an Asian community, and now you walk down the street and you, have, you can smell everybody's walk going, you know. <laughs> on, on, you know, four feet ahead, and it just smells everybody, and it's, it just waves. You can't get that in the suburbs. No, you don't get it. You don't get that in the suburbs. Um, so that, is that a great thing? I mean, I, uh, that's a great memory, and I, I like to hold on to that. Well, and there, there was more than that. How about Mr. Softy? Oh, my God. You could hear it coming. You could hear a block away this song. Absolutely. And, you know, you had to get your change. On. Work on your mother, you know, to have a breakdown and give it 15 cents. I know. <laughs> what about? For, you know, 15 minutes, ma, ma, ma. You break the chops for 15 minutes, and then finally, by the time it rolls up in front of your house, you had the money in hand, and you were, you were happy. Happy little boy or girl. Right, and the soda distributors, too, that you had, like, you know, we used to have black and white ice cream sodas. Do you, do you have those? And egg and egg creams? Absolutely. Uh, you, you, like the Hoffman truck, right? Right. Right. I mean, you, you could either get your seltzer or you get the 
Hammer soda? Was it Hoffman or Hammer? Hammer was big. Yup. And you know, if we, no one else would understand what we were saying right now. No, it's cool. <laughs> I know. That I don't even remember that. You, you just made me uh, unearth that the Hammer guy. And I think the bottles were, the big, big core bottles were probably nickel each. So what, you know, what we pay for a deposit now, that's what they sold at this bottle of soda. So. I know, I know. And how about the deli, all the all the corner delicatessens, too? All the corner delis. Oh, they dried up. In, in my neighborhood, we used to have them. And in fact, we grew up in a, a new, uh, it was Italian and Jewish community. And they had some of the greatest delis, and they all, they fell by the wayside, just like the pizzerias, too. They, they kind of dry up. There was a pizzeria on every block. Now they're all gone too. Oh, that's terrible. Will you buy Sheepheads Bay? No, we were in Bens Bensonhurst. Oh, Bensonhurst. In fact, I was I was a uh, sweat hog. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember the sweat hog. Yes. Both my <laughs> wife and I were both. We were in a, we were in a class not unlike that. Although, however, I I did bounce around. I, I started out in music and art up in uh, up in Harlem on the Upper West Side. Right. Then I went to Midwood in Brooklyn, and then I ended up in New York, which was where they, they filmed, or supposedly that, that TV show was... Uh, Welcome back, Carter. Welcome back, Carter. Yeah. 